Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Somebody won the lottery last night for real? You uh, sent that in the group chat. I did. See, I don't like when you say that. I don't like when people say New Jersey because it ain't the New Jersey we know. I know it's like probably South <laughs> Jersey, probably out there where all the woods at, all the country at, where you can buy <laughs> acres of land. Where was it at in Jersey? They didn't say as yet. They just said uh, somebody won $1.13 billion. Lord so I had to put mercy. it out there to see what y'all were going to say. <laughs> like, be like, I'm going to be a little late today. or I'm a, I'm a, yeah, but Don't nobody act like that when they win the lottery. Shoot. I wouldn't know because I ain't never won. <laughs> you don't even know. You never win. I would be winning, winning four dollars, eight dollars here and there. But I won eight dollars last week. You would act regular, right? Because you wouldn't want to raise no red flags or ring the alarm quite yet. You got to yeah, make sure right. you make sure you sign the back of that ticket first. Yes. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> figure out where you go to cash that you money. You got to talk to the accountant, right? Because you got to figure out how to because you, you got to bust it down, right? No, I don't even matter mm-hmm. after that. Okay, point. I'm changing my number. Yeah, you're like the Swiss father. I'm making real brand And I think you can remain anonymous in New Jersey, right? But I'm, I'm definitely getting one of them Jamaican masks, you know, Jamaican with the long dreads, and I'm going to pick up my money, bro. <laughs> well, just so you know, the winning numbers were 7, 11, 22, 29, and 38. So I probably would pick two of those numbers, 7 and 11. I don't know about the mm. others. But yeah. yeah, I do mm. quick pick. I don't do the number thing anymore. I just give yeah. me. You can remain anonymous in New Jersey. You can? Oh, yes. yes. You're never going to know. Mm-hmm. Never, never, ever, ever, ever. Hey. Gonna know. Damn. All right. Well, let's talk about the uh, what's going on in Baltimore. Very sad. Yeah. So it's the latest uh, about the massive container ship that we know collided into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. There was a press conference yesterday. It went from now uh, no longer a search to now just recovery. Mm-hmm. Uh, take a listen. The FBI using robotic cameras underwater to search for six construction workers who were on the bridge. They are now presumed dead by their employer. Two survivors were pulled from the chilly water this morning. 24 members of the NTSB are on the site leading the investigation. They want to examine the Voyage data recorder. It will be critical. It's a critical piece of our investigation, which is why we have a recorder's team here. Authorities say the Singapore-flagged vessel was headed from Baltimore to Sri Lanka, going nine miles per hour. None of the crew was hurt. Today, President Joe Biden said the federal government will, quote, move heaven and earth to reopen the port and pay for the rebuilding. I told them we're going to send all the federal resources they need as we respond to this emergency. I mean, all the federal resources. And we're going to rebuild that port together. Now, you remember uh, yesterday, uh, Envy, we were talking about, you know, the ship and, you know, how big it was. It was as long as the Empire State Building. Wow. Um, So I thought that was interesting. So when you're talking about going nine miles per hour, it wasn't like it's just something that could just stop, you know, just instantly, I guess, once it got too close. I do want you to take a listen to Governor Wes Moore and what he had to say about the economic impact uh, that this has caused. Take a listen to him. This represents so much of the economic vitality of, of not just the area uh, and not even just the city, but of the state. I mean, this this area is responsible for about over one hundred ninety one million dollars of economic activity a day. Uh, it's responsible for about eight thousand jobs. And so to look at a skyline that doesn't even look familiar, uh, that key bridge has been there ever since I've been born. And so uh, this is surreal looking up and, and, and not seeing it there anymore. Uh, but it, it has significant economic impacts, and that's why our commitment to rebuild it, our commitment to work in partnership with the federal government and our local partners to make it stronger than ever, it is, uh, that is my resolve, and we are going to make it happen. Um, man, salute to uh, my guy, Westmore. You know, if we still mm-hmm. have a democracy after this year, that man is absolutely going to be one of those people we look at as a presidential candidate. But, you know, I just don't understand how something like this happens. And I don't, uh, did you see the video and how easily it looks like the bridge collapsed? Yeah, yeah. just like fell apart. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah but I, what they said, I was going to say, it. I, I also wonder, you know, uh, they said they talk about the people that were doing construction on the bridge, but what about the people that were actually in, in their the cars, cars? Right. You know, because uh, you always see those devices. I don't know if you watch TV late at night. They have mm. those devices where you could crack the window and jump out just in case your car goes on the wall. They said the yeah. cops stopped traffic just yeah, seconds before, before, before the ship hit the Baltimore Spans. That's why they saved so many lives. Really? That's, yeah. That's, that's on the front page of the New York Post this morning. Oh, wow. Man. Mm. Yeah. And so um, it also, I don't know if you guys saw the video, but they zoomed in to show the last car that went over the bridge right before it collapsed. That just made my anxiety. Like, imagine being that last car nope. yeah. and going back and thinking, nope. like, 
it could have been nope. you. I mean, it, it was just really, really profound. And so those were the construction workers uh, that, uh, that that all eight of those individuals, two were rescued, six uh, are presumed dead. And again, because it was 1.30 in the morning, there wasn't a lot of traffic uh, that, you know, that was at the bridge on that time. There are a lot of, there's a lot of conspiracy theories on these guys too as well. And people just kind of need to relax and just wait on the information, mm -hmm. you know, to come in um, as they continue to do that investigation. Yeah, and it said, it said thanks to those cops efforts, no drivers are thought to be dead after wow. the ship the ship, mm -hmm. ship struck. Okay, yeah. so no cars fell in, no... That's what it says. It says okay. cops stopped traffic just seconds before the ship So they hit knew the it was hitting North because, North I guess, the power went out, so they knew it was about to hit the bridge. I have no idea. Yeah, no, I don't want... Oh, <laughs> you, right. you, 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 I mean, maybe they did. I mean, I don't know. I haven't read... Because why else would they stop the traffic? Because yeah. I actually heard that, too. The power went out, and you can see that oh. it went... You know, the power went out on the ship. On the ship, yes, yeah. Both of so y'all right. could see that. No, that's yeah. what it says. go out on the ship, but I don't... No, that's true. It says, in the New York Post, says, after the cargo ship, Dally said it had lost steering early yesterday morning. Officers blocked entry is the Baltimore's oh. Francis Scott Key Bridge. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Jesus. I think some people are taking that and twisting that Charlemagne and Envy guys into another story as well. So, you know. I don't know we about that. I'm just reporting what's in the New yeah, York that was, Post. That's about that. It's on the front page of the New York Jeez. Post this morning. Okay. Because it makes me want to get that. I, there's two things that I always see on um, on the news or, or late night. Is One is the, mm -hmm. the seatbelt cutter. That they have, that, that you could like you could slice mm -hmm. your seatbelt, and then one that cracks your window if you ever have a problem, or your your car mm -hmm. falls in water or something. Yeah. Those two things, so that you can get out. But thank God the police stopped that bridge, Absolutely. and that's mm -hmm. front page news. We'll stop the cars on the bridge. Get mm -hmm. it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. 800-585-1051. And Tess, we'll see you next hour at the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. What up, Tiz? What's going on, DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy, Jess Hilarious. Hey, Tiz. Peace, Tiz. All right, well, let's jump right back into it. Let's talk Supreme Court. Yeah, so demonstrators rallied at the Supreme Court over major abortion appeal case. Take a listen. Protests made clear the controversy. But inside the court, there appeared to be agreement, with a majority of justices on both sides of the ideological aisle highly skeptical of arguments to restrict use of the so-called abortion pill. A key question, why should courts be second-guessing scientific decisions by the FDA on how a drug is prescribed? Do you have concerns about judges parsing medical and scientific studies? At issue in the case, the drug Mifepristone, used with another drug in nearly two-thirds of abortions. A group of anti-abortion doctors argued the FDA wrongly expanded access to the pill in 2016, when it extended the window women can take it from 7 to 10 weeks, and during the pandemic in 2021, said an in-person doctor's visit was not needed, allowing mail-order pharmacies to ship the drug nationwide. Okay, so to bottom line is just to make it really simple, uh, again, as you just heard, some uh, anti-abortion doctors uh, filed a lawsuit saying that, you know, this is not safe. Uh, they believe that uh, the patient should be required to see a doctor at least three times uh, to avoid life-threatening conditions uh, before being prescribed this pill. And what the Supreme Court is saying, which um, quite shocking, folks, uh, the conservative and the liberal uh, Supreme Court justices are both saying, basically to sum it up, we can't, you know, if the FDA said it was safe, we can't, um, you know, go against that. It's, it's not our job, basically, to, to determine with the FDA. They are responsible to uh, look at drug safety. Um, so more than likely, uh, this uh, medication will still be available. We won't know until June, but that's pretty much the summation of it. And you saw a lot of demonstrators yesterday uh, at the Supreme Court uh, demonstrating a, a pro to make sure this, this drug stayed available. All right, well, now let's jump into uh, more Donald Trump. Yeah, so... A New York judge issued the gag order on Trump uh, in the hush money trial, blasting him, saying that he was threatening, inflammatory, uh, and wanted to make sure he had a gag order so that he's not talking about folks while this criminal trial moves forward. So John, uh, Judge Juan Merchant said that Trump uh, can't make statements about attorneys, court staff, or family members of prosecutors or lawyers intended to interfere with the case. He's also barred from making statements about any potential or actual juror. He said that Trump uh, making these statements, you know, obviously is causing 
problems. But he did say uh, that he can make statements about New York attorney Alvin Bragg, uh, who is a public figure. And he's saying he can talk about the judge himself, but just make sure he stays away, you know, from witnesses and jurors and so forth. And in other news, if you need a Bible, if anybody in the building needs a Bible, he is selling it for the low fifty nine ninety nine. Take a listen. What? <laughs> And just today, the ex-president introduced a new product, the God Bless the USA Bible, named for country singer Lee Greenwood's classic tune. For just $59.99 plus tax and shipping, you can own an easy-to-read large print copy. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. It's a lot of people's favorite book. This Bible is a reminder that the biggest thing we have to bring back America and to make America great again is our religion. Religion is so important. It's so missing, but it's going to come back and it's going to come back strong, just like our country is going to come back strong. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to read right. it. I want to know what's in it. I want to know if, they, if he updated it, especially Leviticus 18.22. I uh, definitely want to know. I want to see what that scripture is <laughs> like right now. If you don't know what that scripture is, look it up. Yeah, but but I, I guess uh, anybody can just sell a Bible because I guess there's no royalties of publishing to go. It doesn't go back yeah, to the like Bible. But you can just it, yeah. print your own Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's many versions of the Bible, yeah, but people that rebrand it. So he got it's a cover. It's a nice. It looks like a leather cover. It you has got the LeBron James version. You got no, you, got, you, you do got not. A bunch of <laughs> it's you King James. Okay, and oh my right. god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is a this is a uh, an opportunity for him to pay those legal bills. So mm -hmm. you know they got the sneakers, and now they got the Bible. You know, for the low low fifty nine ninety nine. You too. Uh, can have a Bible. That gag order is a waste of time, though. I mean, Trump wipes his ass with mm. gag orders. Nobody has shut Trump up ever. I mean, it's a good effort to right. attempt to do it, but nobody, it's mm -hmm. not going to happen. This man said, I'm going to win. I don't care. I'm trying to win. I'm trying to get this money. Mm -hmm. This man selling Bibles. Make America pray again. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that is front page news. Thank you, Tiz. <laughs> Absolutely. And make sure you follow at Tesla and Figaro on all social media platforms and subscribe to the Scray Shot No Chaser podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network hosted by Tesla and Figaro. Good morning. The Breakfast Club.